too. You remember last week um, when the Blaze had the report out about the pipe bomb that it might have been planted by uh, the police? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. We didn't spend a lot of time on it because I thought, well, it might have been that. It might have been a lot of things. You know, I'll wait for Steve Baker to pin this down. Then this weekend, I saw Darren Beatty of Revolver News came out, and he said, it is the police. Uh, hmm. Okay, that's kind of a big deal. I mean, that's earth-shattering. Uh, Steve Baker joins us now from The Blaze. Uh, Steve, is this new information or ex- the same information that you had this hey, this is exactly the information that we had and we released early last week. But uh, I think that um, whether it's Darren or any other jur- journalist stepping out and saying that this is conclusively proof that the police uh, planted that bomb is like, getting a little bit ahead of themselves. Um, and, I'll, and I'll tell you why. We have the okay. video of the what we believe to be a secret service agent exiting a metropolitan police vehicle, but he steps out of frame. Now he's carrying a yes. bag in his hand, but he steps out of frame. And then two minutes later, he steps back into the camera frame. Once again, that is not proof that he set a bomb down, but it does make us ask questions and it makes us question the FBI directly once again, as we did in our article, which was our lead in that article, was the FBI can solve this for us today if they will release the DNC's own security cameras. Their own security cameras are aimed and focused on exactly that spot where the bomb was placed, but they have never released that to the public. So it is, I mean, I have to tell you, I mean, if you have to take a leap of faith, if you're forced to take a leap of faith, um, and you look at all of the evidence, it is circumstantial, but it is pretty good, especially when the DNC has that video and won't release it. Why wouldn't you release the video? That's the, um, that's the that's the great question about this bomb, and that is what makes, as you're uh, as you're saying there, this so such a uh, it's such an easy thing to come to a conclusion on when you have a bomb that was allegedly placed 17 hours earlier, around you know 7:30 8 o'clock the night before, and then it allegedly sat there undetected. During all that time with uh, so much foot traffic that morning, so many officers all over that building Mm -hmm. from various agencies, two different bomb sweep teams swept the facility. We know that from the OIG report that came out um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, There there is this mounting evidence that there there just couldn't have been a bomb there for 17 hours, but somehow, some way. 15 minutes before it was discovered, we see a guy getting out of a car, bag in his hand. He walks over that direction into that, that, that it's, it's a, uh, you know, it's a, a blind spot in the camera coverage from the CCTV. Because uh, they moved it. Camp. Well, because this, they moved this it, right? camp, well, this particular camera, we went back when we were in the, in the Capitol uh, viewing room, we went back eight days. That camera had been fixed for eight full days prior to the, this event. And then that camera begins moving five minutes after the alleged discovery of the bomb by a plainclothes Capitol Police officer. So Jeez. when then suddenly, suddenly that, that camera starts moving by remote control, it focuses in, it zooms into that location in between the benches. You can kind of pick up a little bit of a um, uh, visual of the bomb when that camera moves and then it sweeps away. And then within 30 minutes, whoever the operator was turned that camera off of the investigative scene, a uh, full 90 degrees away from it. And it never returned uh, for the rest of the day. So this takes us into a whole new territory if it is true. And this is why I, uh, as much as I believe this probably is what happened, um, you don't want to go there, you know, uh, unless it's absolutely true. And I don't know how we would ever prove that. Um, but 
this, you say, why, why do you say this was a Secret Service agent? Uh, mainly because of the way he was dressed. It was a Secret Service detail and Secret Service were mingling with Metropolitan Police officers that day in that detail, which is not uncommon. Uh, they do assist, uh, uh, the local police do assist the Secret Service. And there was, of course, uh, the fact that we learned uh, sometime, well, a year later after January 6th that Kamala Harris was actually inside the building at that time. So what do you think, why was it planted? There's no doubt. No, I, I, I have no problem going out uh, and declaring the reason for it being planted. The reason for that bomb and the one over at the RNC uh, at the Capitol Hill Club was diversionary. They were specifically planted to divert resources from the Capitol. Bear in mind that only five minutes before the first breach on the West uh, Front there at the Capitol on January 6th, was, that's when the first bomb was found at the RNC. And then only um, two, three minutes before the breach, this particular, well, who we think is a Secret Service agent uh, wearing a trench coat, carrying a bag, just two to three minutes before that barrier uh, barricade breach at the Capitol, this guy disappeared towards those benches and then he's back. And then five minutes later or 15 minutes later, um, some minutes after the barricade breach, a Capitol police plainclothes officer found the bomb. And that diverted resources from the Capitol that were needed. So do you think it was ever supposed to go off? No, these, these, these bombs were not viable. They were, they were absolutely, um, uh, props. And we know that beyond any shadow of a doubt. We have we have direct testimony from one of the agents that worked on that bomb scene, worked on the um, investigation of the bomb, and he was told by his superiors that these devices were not viable. What's your gut tell you on this? <laughs> my my gut tells me that we're going to learn who this man is. That's the first thing. And that's one of the reasons why it would be reckless for us to declare him the guy that planted the bomb. Uh, that would be, you know, there's, there's probably some legal jeopardy for us to do that. But it's suspicious. We are going to learn who he is. We're also eventually going to learn after three and a half years, I hope, why Kamala Harris was in that building, why she was not at the Capitol, where she was being basically coronated as then uh, vice president. She was a voting senator at the time. She was uh, the VP elect at the time. And the debate for her ascendancy to vice president, the certification of the Electoral College vote, was taking place at the Capitol at the time. But she had been scheduled, according to this same OIG report, she had been scheduled, according to the Secret Service logs, two days in advance that she was going to be at the DNC from 1130 to 330 during the scheduled debate. And during the scheduled vote, she was not going to be there. And this is, I'm telling you, Glenn, that's a bigger mystery to me than even the bombs. But if we do discover that these bombs were in fact planted by one of the agencies, secret service, FBI, MPD, Capitol police, doesn't matter. We just, if we discover that, it literally, no, no pun intended, blows this thing up. Tell me about what you know about the uh, Secret Service uh, and the the body of the uh, would be assassin of Donald Trump being cremated before Congress had a chance to examine and investigate, uh, and also that they they cleaned up biological evidence, and right. uh, that apparently doesn't happen. Is that true? Uh, it shouldn't have happened as soon as it did. That's the first uh, answer. It is not 100% uncommon that if a case is clearly solved, that they don't clean up and they don't take the body away or that they don't go ahead and turn the body back over to the family for however they wish to um, take care of the body at that point. It's not uncommon, but this is not a common case. And that's why this should not have been 
uh, done so soon. And I think that uh, Representative Clay Higgins from Louisiana is absolutely correct in that. Now, as a law enforcement officer himself, a sheriff in Louisiana, he would have seen the disposal of bodies of all types of all types of homicides. Um, and and he would know based on the significance of this, that it should have been preserved. The body of Thomas Crook should have been preserved to have other investigators back up autopsies, other examinations from different agencies to confirm, validate findings. Because if you don't do that, all you do is open up the conspiracy theories and you let it ride that there must be a cover up. Now, we, we're pretty sure there's a cover up. We just don't know if they're covering up their uh, incompetence or if they're covering up something uh, much more sinister. What's your gut tell you? <laughs> I, uh, in, in this case, I'm, I'm, I'm in the camp solidly, Glenn, that this young man was groomed, that he had help. Wow. Um, I do not believe for a second that there was a second shooter on the scene. Those conspiracy right. theories are easily disproven. But uh, we have one of our absolute most trusted sources is an individual who for 30 years did this very thing for our government overseas in Africa. Middle East, Asia, Central America, he told me, and I'm quoting, he said, what disturbs him the most about this particular case and Thomas Crooks is he says, I recognize my own handiwork. Are we going to find out who it is? <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know that I'm looking, you know, the Joe Hanneman, uh, who we wrote this article, who I wrote this article with, uh, we're going to be looking at this thing for a long time. I uh, wish you luck, and I hope that, uh, thanks for being responsible on this. I'm not saying that the other reporters are not. They may know something that I don't know or we don't know, um, but uh, I don't want to rush to anything and get it wrong. This is way too important. If that's true, then your deep state is exposed and nobody is safe. Nobody is safe. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Glenn. You bet. Steve Baker from The Blaze. 